Prime Minister launches online program at Divine Word University. Nadzab's four-lane highway to be completed on time. The community should take ownership of this project. And road safety is everyone's business. This is National MTV News with Mirba Tolo. Welcome to Saturday's News. Thanks for joining us. We begin in Morba province and the Morba governor, Kelly Naro, has been reassured by the Chinese contractor building the late to Nadzap four-lane highway that the project will be completed on time. Naro visited the project site this morning and spoke to the workers as well as the project manager. The road sections are expected to be completed by December 2016. Traffic jams and dust will continue for another year and a half as construction on the road sections proceed. China Railway, the company tasked with building the four-lane highway, says they're on schedule and they've received strong support from the people living beside the road. This morning, the Morobe governor, Kerry Naru, visited the construction site. He was previously critical of the lack of consultation between the contractor the national government and the provincial government. The community should take ownership of this project. Mm. For this project to progress, communities around here, they must take ownership of the pro project. Nearly all the material for this road is being sourced locally. The company spent close to four million kina on compensating those asked to move away from the road's edge. And I am appealing to the community from uh, Bugadi Junction all the way up to Nine Mile. Uh, to cooperate and uh, uh, please do not uh, vandalize. Yeah, vandalize the road signs. In 2016, this dirt road will be transformed into an asphalt stretch, complete with footpaths and street lighting. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. A new vessel will begin servicing a route in Morbe province, which was abandoned with the collapse of Lutheran shipping. The Lady Zeming, a 50-seat cargo vessel bought from Indonesia, will travel the Finchafen Siasi route as part of the district's move to bring back much-needed shipping services. It is welcome news for thousands of travellers who suffered after Lutheran shipping was liquidated. Inter Oil Corporation has introduced a scholarship to honour its former chairman, Dr. Galen Baker. It's the Dr. Galen Baker Scholarship in recognition for his contribution to Inter Oil and Papua New Guinea for over 20 years. Dr. Baker is an educationist and lawyer who retired as chairman of Inter Oil in 2014. Yvonne Kambibel reports. Eight students studying geology at the University of Papua New Guinea are proud recipients of Inter Oil's Dr. Galen Baker Scholarship. These recipients recorded the highest GPAs selected from the 12 applications. Four young men and women will receive 10,000 kina each that will cover the cost of their final year studies. I think this is the, uh, this is the crutch of encouraging, encouraging our um, uh, our young and upcoming um, uh, st students here uh, that you know, uh, you know we need to um, you know, sort of motivate them um, through scholarship or through uh, work placements. Inter Oil's Board of Directors Chairman Chris Finlayson recalled Dr. Biker's history living and working in PNG for many years. The scholarship is a token of appreciation for his great contribution. And when he retired from the company, we asked him what he would like as a present, as a, as a memory of his time with Interoil, and he said he would like to support a series of scholarships for PNG students in earth sciences, in geology, people who will hopefully be coming into the oil and gas industry and maybe working for Interoil at a later date. PNG is a developing nation and its development depends on young professionals who will later join the workforce in different fields such as geology. In doing so, we invest in the future of PNG and we allow the community to develop through yourselves, through young, talented students who are going to come into an industry as we were just talking about which incredibly needs more talented young Papua New Guineans in it. 
scholarship recipients thanked InterOil for the initiative. I think it's a very good opportunity because they've selected um, four boys, four girls, and it shows gender equity, and um, it's a good opportunity. Ivan Kambibel, National MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says the heads of higher education must work together to ensure universities and colleges improve their ICT infrastructure. He said this today in Medang while opening a new online program and building at the Divine Word University. Bethany Harriman reports from Medang. The Prime Minister arrived this morning at Medang's Divine Word University to see improved infrastructure at the Institute. Amongst the changes was the launching of a new online learning program that will be offered by the university. The launching was witnessed by staff and students from the university, including members of the community around Medang province. <laughs> Prime Minister Peter O'Neill's speech contained key outlines of the government's agendas on health, education and infrastructure. Today, he attributed the government's MEM task to fix these priority areas especially infrastructure, to create more employment when investors pour in to invest their money in Papua New Guinea. Yes, and uh, we are appealing to all the leaders and the other universities to start uh, working together. And I know that the uh, vice chancellors of the university speak to each other. And hopefully uh, they can all come and learn from Divine World University in how we can uh, uh, also uh, encourage uh, online learning to not only those who are studying on campus, but more so those who are studying in remote parts of our country. He has called on the heads of higher institutions to come together and create partnerships with businesses to improve their facilities and infrastructure. The government's stance for education was evident today. O'Neill opened the new academic building and inspected the new clinic that was donated to the university replacing the old one. He then inspected new university houses that were built with support funding from the government. Uh, we are here witnessing uh, the development of staff houses for the Divine World University staff, uh, a partnership with our public investment program from the government. His other visits were also to the Modilon Hospital's TB facility and eye care centre. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Medang. Finchafen MP and Parliament Speaker Theo Zurano says government services are slow because of the human workforce attitude. Mr. Zurano made this statement while commissioning the boys' dormitory for Finchafen Technical College recently funded through the 2013 DSIP funds. He said there's a lengthy time when the projects are approved and delivered. No one am. System is slow. So system is slow because money operating system and it's slow long operating system. You're watching National MTV News. Road safety is everyone's business and police want more evidence to complete the Hanobada shooting investigations. With more and other local stories right after these messages, stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Road safety is a shared responsibility for all stakeholders. This was the message highlighted by Works Department Secretary David Ware at the recent Road Safety Seminar on Engineering and Infrastructure in Port Moresby. The seminar is also part of a long-term commitment by the Australian Government and the National Works Department to improve the transport sector with emphasis on staff training for competency. The Road Safety Seminar was hosted by the Department of Works and fully supported by the Australian government through the PNG Australia Transport Sector Support Program. The seminar also coincided with the UN Global Road Safety Week as Papua New Guinea is a signatory to the UN Decade of Action on Road Safety. It aims to reduce the number of deaths and serious injuries throughout the country. Discussions at the seminar centered on the importance of having an effective database on crash problems as this will help to identify hotspots or areas and road sections which are dangerous and likely to cause accidents. Participants were told that having a clear picture on a current road condition can help to maintain some of the bad roads in the country. Apart from improving bad roads on the local front, 
Papua New Guinea further committed itself to support road safety at international level when Work Secretary David Were signed a UN petition to improve road safety for children. Bridget Komatep, National MTV News. While cancer treatment is expensive with limited testing and treatment facilities in PNG, the good news is cancer is preventable. PNG Cancer Foundation Ambassador Linda Babao O'Neill says cancer prevention is important for Papua New Guineans. She said this during the biggest morning tea fundraiser hosted by PNG's leading car distributor, Ella Motors, in Port Moresby. Cancer is one of the top five killer diseases in PNG. Health experts say statistics have shown an increase in the number of people diagnosed with mouth and breast cancer. However, the disease is preventable. Speaking during Alamoto's biggest morning tea fundraiser for the PNG Cancer Foundation, wife of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says treatment is expensive but encourages people to eat healthy food, exercise and refrain from smoking and drinking. Getting regular medical checkups is also fundamental in fighting cancer. We can, Papua New Guinea does not have the resources or the, the services to cater for many of those who do have cancer. So it's imperative that we, we prevent, prevent cancer. The fight against cancer is strongly being supported by many government agencies and corporate organizations like Elomotos. Together, we will assist to inspire hope for those waging a brave fight against this deadly disease. Money raised from such fundraising events are used by the PNG Cancer Foundation to carry out awareness and educate people about the different types of cancer, early detection and where to seek assistance. In PNG, few public hospitals like Engao Memorial Hospital in Ley and privately run hospitals like Pacific International Hospital are equipped with cancer treatment facilities. However, these facilities may be expensive for ordinary Papua New Guineans. Therefore, the Cancer Foundation is encouraging people to choose carefully what they eat and drink. Quinten Alom, National MTV News. The brother of one of the Hanobada shooting victims has called on eyewitnesses to come forward with more evidence. Sinaka Rarua says their statements will assist police with their investigations. So far, there are over 100 statements with the police, but it is insufficient to narrow down suspects. The case of the January Hanobada killings is similar to other cases involving police shootings and killings. Acting Assistant Crimes Commissioner Donald Yamasombi made it clear that investigations will continue and suspects will be identified. We have investigated many other cases similar to this, police shootings. The latest one being the uh, Pissimic case in Ley. A policeman has been charged. We are also assisting our uh, fellow investigators in Mount Hagen to investigate the police shooting in Mount Hagen. According to Yama Sombi, the lack of cooperation from the Hanwabada villages has not helped with the police investigation. While there are over 100 witness statements with the police, Yamasombi says more statements are needed to narrow down investigations. We have done many other uh, similar cases in hostile situations, in places that are so remote that we could easily lose uh, evidence. It's just that the people are not cooperating and assisting us to give us evidence to pinpoint and identify people. That's the problem that we are having. Since the shootout that killed his brother in January, Sinakararua has come out to the media with a strong message. Please, the witnesses who believe are involved in this, please, I, I ask you to come forward because the police, are, they cannot do anything if we are not going to assist them. Yesterday, new evidence was handed over to police and now the forensic unit will build on that to identify suspects to the killings. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Mothers at the Port Mosby General Hospital Maternity Ward were presented today with goodie bags by the Susu Mamas Ball Committee. They were delighted at receiving these gifts a day early from the wonderful tradition of Mother's Day. 
Susu Mama's Ball Committee members gathered this morning at the Three Mile Maternity Ward grounds with representatives from KK Kingston Limited who assisted with handing out gift bags to the mothers. The bags contain toiletries and food items donated by KK Kingston and companies like Goodman Fielders, Nestle, Ramu Agri Industries and Paradise Foods. Nurses at the hospital said the kind gesture is a nice way of appreciating mothers during this special time and also goes a long way in helping especially unfortunate mothers who they say are not only found in settlements but also in hospitals. 164 mothers who are admitted respectively in the postnatal, special care nursery and the label and delivery wards were each given two gift bags. Susu Mamas partners closely each year with the National Department of Health, provincial health authorities in the Western Highlands, Morobe and Eastern Highlands provinces, and the NCD and Central Health Services to support maternal and child health throughout the regions of Papua New Guinea. Board Secretary Anna Malsen says support from sponsors like Steamships and KK Kingston and numerous donors is essential to keep operations going. Uh, Susu Mamas now employs over 100 staff. We have uh, a number of midwives on board and um, nurses and our services are expanding and it's hard for us to keep up with the demand. So we're very, very thankful to our partners. Chairperson of the Ball Committee, Tracy Head, says the committee is delighted to share this experience with the mothers and is determined to raise more funds for maternal and child health care through its annual fundraising ball. Last year was the biggest year for the committee who raised over 400,000 kina to support the work of Susu Mamas in the country. It's the purchase of equipment, purchase of land, it's, um, it's funds that they need that aren't covered in their grants from the government because of course grants don't actually cover everything that they need to spend money on. So it's a little bit of leeway. Vanessa Knight, National MTV News. Two shops in Port Mosby's Erima suburb went up in flames. The shops, located just metres away from the newly constructed Kookaburra flyover, caught fire at around 3 p.m. on Friday. One of these shops, Peter Trading, was built in the 1980s by a local businessman from Southern Highlands Province. This footage taken yesterday afternoon shows boat shops on flames while the public watched helplessly. At the time the fire was burning, police officers responded and kept looters away. Kove Perake, who was present at the time the fire started, said the fire started from Peter Trading and later moved to the next shop, CJ's Clothing. He said by the time the fire trucks arrived at the scene to put out the flames, it had already spread to the other shop. Somewhere on Habastun or Abinun, uh, house and fire. So me come come up, me look we stop. Now house and fire, namel fire come out on namel. Tubla and tubla side side no fire. Now nibla house no fire. Let me stop yet now. Uh, then we call him uh, firemen, all call him firemen, firemen come, two black car, one come, two black come, two black car, two all try, two black one come, house, not the house in the Tatim, still them, or the cargo, or the family stuff, one them, okay, this is the two, or the cargo is one them, nah, maybe the thing was a housing by, firemen come and stop, now housing, but down in the still fire, get a fireman, cut truck, two black car, come in on up. Peter Trading was open in the 80s. It is one of the first Kaibas to be owned and operated by a national, but was later leased to an Indian operator who employed locals to run the shop. Both shops operate on a 24-hour basis, and in most cases is the final stop for people traveling out of Port Mosby and into Central and Gulf provinces. Three fire trucks arrived at the scene but could not save the buildings. We tried our best to contain the fire, but due to the, uh, the, the water uh, problem, the pressure, so we, we could not uh, contain the, the fire, so the fire decided to you know, spread through some of the uh, uh, buildings which are connected to the, the house. Three hours later, a rescue fire truck from the National Airport Corporation arrived at the scene and put out the fire. The cause of the fire has not been established as yet. Investigators from the fire department will be conducting investigations to determine the cause of the fire. We should, we should uh, refer that, uh, the, the matter to our fire investigation division. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. 
You're watching National MTV News. Up next, we'll have Trukai Sports. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Having been unbeaten with three wins under their belt, the Agma Gurias and Simbu Lions sit at the top of the table in round four of the Digital Cup. In tomorrow's matches, Hagen Eagles will take on the Simbu Lions at the Rabiamul Oval. Mendy Moruks will face the Hela Wigman in Mendy, while the battered Lahanis will hope to secure the first win of the season when they take on Gulf Isapairs. And it's said to be a fest of rugby in Kokopo as the Guriyas face the Port Mosby Vipers before the SPPNG Hunters take on Northern Pride in Round 9 of the Super Interest Cup. Moving on to NRL and Brisbane Broncos defeated Penrith Panthers 8 points to 5 in an entertaining football match. In the second match, Sydney Roosters crushed West Tigers 36 points to 4. The Brisbane Broncos celebrated the return of Darius Boyd by snatching an 8 points to 5 win over the Panthers at Lang Park. In an evenly contested match, just when the Panthers thought they were to get away with the win, Broncos halfback Ben Hunt set up Corey Oates to score the match winner in the dying seconds of the game. The Sydney Roosters meant business as they raced to a 22 points to nil lead at halftime. The Roosters were at it again in the second half, scoring two unanswered tries. Daniel Tupo was the star of the show, scoring a hat-trick to see the Roosters win comfortably. Jennings, Jennings gets it out to Tupo. The Tigers grabbed a late consolation try in the 77th minute, but the effort was in vain as the Roosters walked away with the victory. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. And that is Trukai Sports for today. I'll bring you the weather details after the break. True Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. All right, let's take a quick look at the weather for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Port Moresby, Kerama, Popendeta, and Alata are mostly fine, and fine weather also expected in Daru. And that's where we end today's bulletin, Saturday, the 9th of May, 2015. From the MTV News team, I'm Mary Batulo. Pleasant viewing. Bye for now.